Scott Tempesta from Sailing Anarchy here. We're back with another one of our videos, and you might wonder why I'm just like this. Well, normally we do retro today. We're going metro, baby. So where am I? I can tell you where I am. It's very scary. It's complicated and there's all kinds of lines and I just don't know what the hell they do. What this is, is the beginning of our next boat. And now we're gonna show you. And here we are on today's Metro boat. You probably can't quite tell what it is, but you might have a hint or two. Uh, I can tell you one thing, it has probably the greatest helmsman position of any boat. I mean, and there's not one, there's two. And there's two because this boat's wide. How wide do you think it is? I'll tell you, it's 60 feet wide. You're like, no. Yeah. It's 60 feet long, 60 feet wide. There's one, two, three hulls. And there's a mast that is 100 feet tall on this boat. And this is a full cruising boat. Kidding. This is an Orma 60. This boat is Mighty Merlot. This boat holds every, nearly every West Coast distance race record there is. Most notably, it won the most recent Transpac with an elapsed time of four days, seven hours, two minutes. Think about that for just one second. That's 2,200 miles or so in four days. Want a better record? I got a better one for you. Cabo, I don't know, I'm guessing 500 miles or so, could be wrong, but it's in the ballpark. They did it in a day and some change. They, I was talking to Will Sudo, who runs the boat. He said it was like an overnight race, like an overnight race to Cabo San Lucas, but that's what this boat will do. It's amazing. It's hard to even explain any of it, uh, but I'm gonna do my best to do that right now. Let's take a look. Remember those lines I was trapped under? where I couldn't get out, I didn't understand it. Well, I got out, but I still don't understand it. There is so much going on with this boat because the systems are, well, they're fairly complicated. And when, you, when I show you what some of these are, you'll be amazed. But then when we step back and look at the boat in its totality, you go, well, yeah, it's complicated, but it's, it's also kind of simple in its own bizarre way. So on a few of our, our uh, retro videos that we've done, I've always talked about the pit area, right? where some are really nice and some are nightmare. I'm going to label this nightmare only because I just don't know what everything is. Foil down, dagger up, dagger down. I mean, there's a lot of things going on here. This boat is indeed a foiling trimaran. It's got giant sea foils. The boat will get up out of the water on the foils. It won't in the back because there's nothing to lift the boat back, but it, it, it gets up on the front and obviously just hauls ass but the boat only weighs 12,000 pounds just think about that 12,000 pounds I've got an Ericsson 35 mark II. it weighs almost 11,000 pounds and I know it's about as fast as this uh, in some ways <laughs> in no way at all is it as fast as in fact nothing is as fast as this not on the West Coast these boats came from mostly France they had a class of these boats and there was probably around 20 of them made. This boat was built in 2003. This was originally Groupama 2, and there was a, a one before it, obviously, because you can't have a two without a one. Uh, there was not a three, and I don't think there was a reason to, to do a three, because this boat won a lot of the championships. Uh, they won a lot of the distance races, and the boats were really incredible. Obviously, I mean, just look at this thing. There's so much to talk about, and we will, but the boats were starting to like, you know, do really well in terms of like, people were starting to pay attention, sponsors were coming on board, but they had a, uh, I think it was the Jacques Vabre race, and uh, they had 18 starters, but only three finished. So all of a sudden it was like, wow, these things are fast, but they're pretty fragile. And they were doing all kinds of things with the capsizing, actually breaking. So the things that they learned on Group Groupama 1, they implemented here and then they expanded some of the design aspect to make this thing absolutely incredible. See that mass? You see how it's tilting up there? No, it's not broken. 
uh, and I'm gonna show you why it's doing that, and I'm gonna show you how it's doing that. Come on up here with me. So I talked a little bit about this, both the simplicity and the complexity of this boat, and I think nothing probably capsulates that better than this, right? It's obviously really complex for this thing to work all the time in all the wind conditions, wind angles, sea state that they get in. Yet, if you look at it, it looks pretty simple. It's really not. So there's a big old hole here, and you probably can guess what goes there, centerboard. And here it is. Look at this thing. Solid carbon, obviously pretty darn deep. I believe it's red in case you flip over, which they don't do, and they're not planning on doing it. Uh, they give me the helm for five minutes in a breeze. This thing's over. Interesting thing about this, got a little trim tab right here. Very smoothly integrated, but you know, depending upon what their wind angle is, going up wind, they can, they can crank this thing to get more of an airfoil shape into it, more of a wing shape, as it were. And uh, this is basically what keeps the boat going straight. Downwind, light air, they pull the thing up a little bit. But otherwise, that is your main function here. What's this little dude, you might ask? I mean, maybe it's for their tender. Maybe it's this laser rudder. No, these are the rudders for the Arma, and they're obviously really small. There's two of them, because there's two of those. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of surprising, right? You would think that this boat would have giant, everything would be giant and deep, but no. The centerboard and the main rudder, those are, but these most certainly are not. And kind of cool, right? Light, strong, bitchin'. Got to have them. I think I'll put one on my Ericsson 35. Wait, I don't have an Arma. I'll put an Arma on first, then I'll put this on. Okay, this boat doesn't have normal sails because uh, it's not a normal boat. And by that, I mean, yes, it's got a mainsail. It's obviously high tech and fully battened and really great, but this boat doesn't have spinnakers because it goes so fast all the time. The apparent wind is always forward on this thing. In fact, I understand it's a little bit like you're going upwind all the time because the faster you go, the further forward the apparent wind is. So you're not flying any regular spinnakers. You're flying basically jibs and, and an oversized kind of a Genoa on the thing. J1, J2, J3, they're all on furlers so that basically there's no sails flipping about and you know taking them down. I mean, it would be a nightmare on this boat if that was the case. You wouldn't want that at all. So that's how they do everything. Big jib, a smaller one, then they have an ORC, big jib up here. Uh, next size down, then they use an ORC jib in here. They obviously all sheet aft. You have the ability to, to bring the leads out fairly wide on some of these sails because, well, hell, you've got this width. You probably should use it. And then they fly Jennikers off of the sprit, also off of a foil. It seems pretty simple because the bow guy, I mean, sure, he's got stuff to do, but as long as the furlers work, everything else works on this boat. And so, again, we talked about the complex and the simple. Yeah, looks pretty simple. I don't know, anything that goes 100 feet in the air though, this can't really be all that simple. But that's a lot of how they do everything up here. Uh, it must be amazing to watch because I'm certainly not gonna do it. But the Mod 70s are kind of a modern interpretation of this boat and this boat has had some unbelievable battles with maybe three of the really good boats that they've raced against and this boat's held its own a lot and you could just imagine how those battles must be. I mean, I know Transpac was really close and why wouldn't they be close? I mean, they're these amazing things that go amazing speed sailed by amazing sailors. I mean, if it's not close, something's wrong for sure. And right here, not much wrong with this boat at all. Now the Mighty Merlot, or Groupama II, before they got it, was designed more for light to medium air, which is perfect for Southern California, right? Races to Mexico, even Hawaii. That isn't necessarily a breezy race. Uh, in fact, it's more often light than not. One of the things they did to make this boat faster in light air compared to like the Mod 70s, which was designed to be a little faster and more breeze, so they have slightly smaller sea foils. This boat has relatively large sea foils, and the idea is to help get the boat up on a step earlier. If you got smaller foils, you gotta get going a lot faster to get the boat up. When you have bigger foils like this, at least as I understand it, uh, once you get those things in and the boat will get up a little faster because the sea foils are a little bit larger and just a, another little factor that you wouldn't know but helps explain why this boat has such great speed and light to, to moderate breeze. 
The last pedestal we showed you was an old variant one off of Velos, the 73 footer. These are obviously a lot more modern and a little more complicated. It's nice because you can link them together. You can control all of the pit winches, the Genoa sheet winches or jib sheets or whatever's up, and then also the main sheet winch right here. This boat's a little different in a lot of ways. And one of my ignorant questions was, well, do you have somebody on the main sheet like all the time? thinking that that was a little bit how catamarans were, right? You've got to let that main sheet go. If they're going to get in trouble. Well, this is a trimaran, obviously. But in this boat, there's always somebody holding the Genoa sheet because that is the critical thing if the boat's going to get a little bit of trouble. Why, you ask? Well, let's say you're zooming along at 28 knots and I'm steering and, you know, I've had a few beers. And uh, you start, start to get in a little bit of trouble, right? So if you let the problem is you let the mainsail out, so as soon as you start to like stick the boat in a little bit, it slows down, you let the main out, the apparent wind has gone so far aft and now you have this giant thing that's now pushing against the mainsail, causing the boat to go even further. So you don't ease the main sheet in those situations, you let the jib sheets go first and that kind of keeps the boat from going a direction you don't want it to go at all. Come on down here. All right, here's the other function that the pedestals do. Right here, you see two rotary pumps, and these will engage the hydraulic fluid so that you can adjust some of the critical things on the boat. What critical things? Well, I don't know. How's outhaul? How's stay sail? How's the solent jib? Uh, I don't know what's under here, but I believe it's critical as well. So what you do is you pick the one that you want, you open it, and then you crank the handles. And that gets the rotary pumps going, gets the hydraulic fluid going, and makes the adjustment that you want. This is normally covered. By the way, this is your uh, companion way right here. I I'm gonna show you that in a, in a minute. It's kind of hard to believe, really. But that just shows you another system on the boat, how it actually works and what it actually does. Very impressive. Before we head down below, let's check the time, shall we? Ha, huh, look at that. It's perfect time. You know why? Because I have an amazing watch. It's called an Original Grain, and it's made by this really great group of guys, veterans, who build these watches out of wood and steel. And this particular watch is Koa Wood from Hawaii. Amazingly enough, ties in nicely with this boat's Transpac record of four days, seven hours, and two minutes. They're beautifully made. They're waterproof for sure. and. It just is an amazing watch. And companies like this, like Original Grain, are the companies that help us make these videos and share them with you. Uh, if you like this watch, click on the link in the description here in the video, check it out. And they've got a nice lineup of watches that are just gorgeous with the overarching theme being that of wood. And this particular one has some metal built into the strap. I dig the thing. You will too, originalgrain.com. Let's go down below. I just came down the escape hatch here and that lands me right in the galley. Uh, this boat is light. Everything's a premium on weight. Everything is just built really light and obviously really, really strong. They cook freeze dried food here. Really, there's not a lot to say here except for one amazing feature. So while you're cooking that freeze dried food, yeah, maybe you want to take a dump at the same time. I don't know, because there's the head right there. A little carbon fiber seat. And um, yeah, okay, I don't really have anything to add to that. It's just kind of is what it is. Okay, there's the galley and the head. Now, come back here with me, because this is where people sleep. This is, by the way, this is the transom of the boat. This is the main hall and it's starting to get really skinny back here and really dark. I bet at night when it's howling, I'll bet it's a, a fright show. Um, I don't know how anybody can sleep, but they do. Here's one bunk. And if you keep coming back here, there's another one right here. And so you can put one, two, three, and then apparently beanbag chairs are, or beanbags in whatever form. They put them back here and another person can sleep back here. So when it's windy, everybody's back here on this boat. So if you were looking for a cruising option here, there isn't one. This is obviously a really, really focused single purpose boat. There are more features on this boat than I actually knew. Here's an interesting one. Go all the way back there. 
there's a ballast tank back there. And apparently you can pop in upwards of a couple hundred liters of water. And the reason why, you know, if you need a little bit of, uh, you're in a seaway and it's a big breeze and you want to make sure that bow isn't dropping in, you put some water back there, keep it in the very back of the boat, gets the boat a little stern down, maybe a little bit more stability, but certainly keeps the bow from going in as quickly as it otherwise might if you didn't have that water there. They don't carry it that most of the time, but when they need it, that's where it goes. Also, see these little hatches? Well, they're hatches all right, but they're not the kind that you would think. These are escape hatches, right? Because listen, these things have been known to flip over. I mean, I don't know if this boat has, but they do tip over when it's windy. You can have all kinds of problems with find this thing upside down on its side. Here's how you get out. You gotta crank this all the way open and boom, you eject yourself right out of there. They don't open these otherwise. There's no, you know, let's get some breeze inside the boat. No, no, no. This is getting your ass out of here when the thing starts to go a little sideways or maybe a little upside down ways. All right, I've moved forward into the boat and, you know, into its main salon <laughs> or saloon, as some would say. No, it's not. This is the navigation area right here. And really and truly, that's all there is in this thing. I mean, right? There's the water ballast potential in the transom of the boat. There's the bunks. There's the uh, uh, galley slash shitter. And this is where the action happens right here. Um, Artie Means, our good friend Artie Means, uh, has navigated this boat uh, to some successes, most notably the Transpac record. And this is where he spends his time. And you generally, since things are happening so fast, right? You're covering miles so rapidly. It's not like a conventional boat where you go, oh yeah, okay, course is good, yeah, that's good, okay. No, 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 it's here, it's literally 24 seven, just in terms of, you know, data and information and things changing. And so this is really, I mean, it's hard to sail this boat. It takes a lot of really smart people to sail this boat. But honestly, it's the guy here with this, who's doing this, that's really controlling everything about where you're going, how you're going to get there. And you're just really focused on this. How focused are you? Well, if you're a navigator, you don't really sleep there. You sleep right here in this little recliner. <laughs> and trust me, it's not really a recliner. It's like a, a torture rack. But for resting, if you're in this area and even sleeping, you know, you're just gonna be right here. You go on deck, sure, of course you do. You go up there and sail a little bit, but you're navigating, this is where you are. What's up here? I suppose you could theoretically crawl up here and take a little nappy, but mm, mostly not. These are water uh, proof and crash proof bulkheads on the boat because while you don't want to hit anything, if you do, you're like, and, and all three hulls have this, you hit something hard, you crap, break the front of the boat off, the boat's not gonna sink, right? It's not gonna get any water past here. So this is how the boat is put together. Everything is carbon and foam and light and tight and just everything is functional. No extras here. You talk about single purpose. I mean, it takes that notion and just refines it to the end. And this is not a new boat people. This boat's 2003 when this boat was made. Think about that, right? 17 years ago. I mean, today is cutting edge and amazingly fast. What do you think it was like then? I mean, this is really pushing the envelope for yacht design, for speed, for efficiency, and for going really fast. This brings a close to this episode of Metro Boat. Sorry, I don't have the get up on anymore. The Orma 60 is this amazing thing. I mean, truly, it's just crazy, especially once you're on it. 60 by 60 by 100, those are my kind of numbers. We hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that like button down there. And whatever you do, please subscribe right there as well. Um, oh, and if you want a really cool pitch and watch made by Original Grain, Click the link in the description in our video. They are really, really nice and really surprisingly inexpensive. So, for Nobleman Productions, for Sailing Anarchy, I'm Scott Tempesta. We're out.